game. And Jack Taster pitched the final two innings. The Jay Happs first pitch to Brian Roberts, a strike. And we're underway here at Citizens Bank Park. That fastball came in at 88 miles per hour from Jay Happ. See Roberts' numbers. And that one just misses. He was one for five in last night's ball game. Yeah, really, they kept him under control. He got a hit late in the game. And Roberts is a table setter for them, and he gets a lot of doubles. And half is ahead, one and two. The Phillies have lost four consecutive games, and you know, going into tonight's ball game, they are one and six on this homestand, which began against the Red Sox, continued against the Blue Jays, and now is finishing up against the Baltimore Orioles. Ryan Howard, as Wheels alluded to, is not in the starting lineup tonight and most likely won't play this evening. That one's pulled toward the hole. It's shortstop right past the dive of Pedro Feliz. And it's a left field. So Ryan Roberts is aboard to start things off in the top of the first. Ryan last night all of a sudden felt a, a fever coming on. And boy, did the fever come on. 104 degree temperature. And he went to a local hospital last night. And stayed overnight. He was dehydrated. Was released earlier today. And I guess he had been battling something for the last day or so. And you know that's why he's not in the starting lineup this evening. And he is resting here at the ballpark. And uh, I don't think we're going to see him at all tonight. But we'll see. Charlie wasn't sure before the ball game. Yeah, you would think it would be tough to get anything out of Ryan Howard tonight. Here's Nick Markakis with a runner on first base. This could be two. Rollins to second for one. An easy double play. 6-4-3, and just like that, two outs here at the top of the first inning. Well, a great way to start the game for Jay Happ to be able to throw a double play ball. Nick Markakis hit that thing right on the nose, but it was right at Jimmy Rollins. And as you said, Tom, a potential easy double play. Markakis really busted down the line, though, and made that a little closer than you think it was going to be. Well, two outs now here in the top of the first, just six pitches for Jay Happ. And here's Adam Jones, who was one for five in last night's ball game. Jones overall hitting 310 with 12 home runs and 42 runs batted in. And he's a good one. Just 23 years old. And he has struggled here in the month of June. He is just two for his last 17, counting last night's base hit. A couple other changes for the Phillies tonight. Paul Bacco is doing the catching. Charlie Manuel said with the right hander on the mound, he's been thinking about having Paul Bacco in the ball game as a left handed hitter. He's a very good defensive catcher. We've seen him with a lot of teams over the years. And there's Bacco. He handles the game well. He doesn't know this pitching staff, but, you know, he's a quick study with all the guys he's caught throughout his long major league career. This is his 746th game behind the plate. Jones checks his swing. That pitch misses. It's three and one. A lot of different things going on out there tonight with Ryan Howard now playing. Dobbs is playing first base. Matt Stairs is in the game in left field. Of course, Noe Banez. Ball four, and Jones is aboard with a two out walk. First walk issued by Jay Happ. As we mentioned, Rich Doobie was talking about Jay Happ and his bullpen sessions in between starts and working on the secondary pitches. And, you know, the Phillies are have a couple of young pitchers that are still working on those secondary pitches. You know, in Jay Happ's case, it's, you know, working on the, the breaking ball and the change up. Here's Aubrey Huff, and he takes one away, and Baco goes after it. Yeah, they count one ball and no strikes. The other thing they've been working on with Jay Happ is trying to continue that downward plane using that height of six feet six inches as an advantage against these hitters. Well, he has to keep the ball down, Tom. He just cannot pitch up in the strike zone. Some guys, very few can get away with it. Uh, he can't. You know, he does not have the type of fastball to be able to pitch up in the strike zone and not throw a lot of fly balls. And in this ballpark, fly balls are not good. Line drive towards center field. That's going to drop in for a base hit. Played in a hop by Victorino, who quickly gets the throw in. And that's the second hit of the inning for the Orioles. They have runners on first and second. <laughs> and 
Ty Wiggins is making the start tonight at third base for Melvin Mora. Will bat for the Orioles. There's a lot of veteran players on this team, like Wigginton, Mora, uh, Luke Scott, Aubrey Huff, and these guys, and they mix it up, mix it up a little bit to, you know, to give them some playing time. Ty Wiggins had signed a two-year contract during the offseason with the Baltimore Orioles. There were a lot of folks that were surprised he was out on the open market for for so long, but I, he was, from a position player standpoint, tied to the economy of the game. Like a lot of other players. Phillies made a run at him for one year, but not two. And uh, when he got the two year deal uh, from Baltimore, he took it. But uh, he was looking at the Phillies as a potential uh, stop off point for a year. And he'd have been a nice player to have on your ball club because he can do some things. Yeah, he could play not only the infield positions, he also, also could play probably left field a little bit. Mm -hmm. Two and one the count to him. Trying to work his way through this first inning. And just a little low, and the count runs to three balls and one strike to Wigginton. Being very patient with him, with the exception of Mark uh, Markakis, who swung at the first pitch and hit it hard into a double play. And the good thing is, you see Luke Scott on deck, who, by the way, is hitting 356 against left handed pitching. The good thing for Happ right now is he's missing down. This is down again. Ball four. The bases are loaded. Second walk of the inning by Jay Happ. And he got the first two outs thanks to that double play on just six pitches, but now has thrown 12 to the last three batters. And is it a jam with the bases loaded and two away for Luke Scott? Scott, who is normally the DH for the Baltimore Orioles, what a year he's had. 306 with 14 homers and 37 RBIs. Spent some years in the uh, Houston Astros organization. Fans think I've seen this guy before. He was with with the Astros when they had some really good teams. Had 23 home runs last year for the Orioles. And he tries to check his swing. They'll appeal. No swing. Says the third base umpire Sam Holbrook. Tried a breaking ball there after a lot of fastballs. There you go. He said he's. Uh, Got nice numbers against left handed uh, pitching, and he has seven home runs. Those other two guys are right handed hitters. Up high, two balls and no strikes. Orioles, as a team, lead the American League. Their DH does. And batting average and home runs, and that's because of Luke Scott and what he's done this year as the DH. Close stance, stands near the plate, tries to take away the outside pit corner. Little number foul, it's two and one. Pulled off that one a little bit. Happ is not a left hander that makes hitters pull off all that much because he's kind of an over the top guy. Out now even two balls and two strikes to Luke Scott. So half his battle back after being behind two and zero. Oh. Dan Iasoni is going to give Baco a little time right now. That baby went thumping off of his mask. Watch this. Boink. And uh, Iasonia and he winced a little bit after that swing too. So everybody needed some time down there. But Iasonia looks like it bothered his right arm. Everybody seems to be set. Count is two balls and two strikes to Luke Scott. The base is loaded here at the top of the first inning. Got him. Foul tip into the glove of Bucko, and the inning is over. First strikeout of the night for Jay Happ. He works out of a first inning jam. He strands the bases loaded. After the top of the first, it's the Orioles nothing. Jay Happ with a strikeout. The Phillies have it up.
a perfect text picture, picture if you choose to, at least at this point. And Charlie Manuel's starting lineup tonight a little different because of the illness to Ryan Howard. Leading it off at shortstop, Jimmy Rollins. Shane Victorino, the center fielder, bats second. Chase Utley, the second baseman, bats third. Meanwhile, Matt Stairs makes the start in left field, and he's the cleanup hitter. Jason Worth, the right fielder, bats fifth. Greg Dobbs over at first base, hitting sixth. Followed by Pedro Feliz, Paul Bacco, and Jay Happ. That's the bottom of third of this Phillies lineup. And they're facing right-hander Brad Bergeson, the 23-year-old from Fairfield, California, making his 12th start of the season. There's some pitchers they really like, and this kid's one of them. He won the Jim Palmer Award last year, which is the best pitcher in their minor league system with 16 and 7 at two stops. Here's our scouting report on it from Southwest Airlines. We also have to add a slider in there after chain talking to some of their people. Uh, he has a very heavy sinker, and there you see the minor league pitcher of the year. The sinker is his big pitch. And he has bounced his way through in a good way through this Orioles organization. Originally drafted back in 2004. Count is 0 2 to Jimmy Rollins. And he lines one on one hop towards shortstop. And Dino with the off balance throw in time with the pick by Huff. A well, good play all the way around on a ball that was not hit that hard. That's the first out here at the bottom of the first inning. really been pleased with the way Andino's been playing shortstop with Cesare Sturis on the disabled list. And there's an example of it. This ball's got a lot of crazy spin when it hits, too. It's a tough ball to handle. And with Jimmy Rollins' speed, he has to throw on the run away from the play. And a nice play on the other end by Aubrey Huff on a short hop. Now Shane Victorino riding an eight-game hitting streak. And he takes a fastball for a strike. Shane's hitting 311 during this month of June. And you see 355 during the hitting streak. See Aubrey Huff got a short hop here and backhands it nicely. And Jimmy was hustling all the way too, trying to leg that out for an infield base hit. Chopper toward the middle and Dino again. This one is a little easier. And Victorino's retired. Well, like all sinker ball pitchers, you look to see if they throw ground balls. And he's thrown two weak ground balls right out of the chute. It's a foul ball by Luke Scott. Paul Bacco is being looked at. Something must have went in his eye. He had some dirt. Yeah. Mark Anderson, one of the Phillies athletic trainers. Some saline in that eye, making sure it's all cleared out. I'll bring Chase Utley to the plate. Chase overall hitting 301 with 15 homers. So a pretty good homestand. Nine for 29, a 310 batting average. And it's no balls and two strikes. Dan Ayasonia is calling the balls and strikes tonight. Meanwhile, Charlie Relaford is the crew chief over at first, Larry Van over at second, and Sam Holbrook. Around the third. Ferguson in his last outing threw a complete game. He threw 112 pitches. You kind of wonder how he will be after throwing 112. Some of the folks from the Orioles were a little surprised that. Greg Zahn was doing the catching tonight because Weeders caught that complete game and they thought maybe they had a pretty good rhythm going. Check swing, one hopper at Andino. Third try of the inning. And the third try is just as good as the first two. One, two, three, go the Phillies here at the bottom of the first. We go to the second, no score.
20th for a three-game series. It wraps up on Wednesday the 22nd at 105 with a Citizens Bank Business Person Special. And don't forget, it's also a Modell Sporting Goods. Kids run the bases afterward. You can log on to phillies.com to purchase your tickets. Greg Zahn leads it off in the top of the second inning. And on the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Indians took a 5-4 lead in the top of the 13th inning. And then the Cubs won it on a wild pitch by Kerry Wood in the bottom of the 13th. It was the second straight game that Wood had blown against his former team. Yeah, Derek Lee hit a home run off him in the, in the game on Friday to tie that one up. And they wound up losing it. Speaking of Derek Lee, he's riding a 17-game hitting streak after today's ball game. And he was one of their good players that got off to a slow start. There are a lot of guys off to slow offensive starts this year. But they've won three straight games now in their last at bat. Two and two, the count to Greg's on. It was now the backup catcher for the Baltimore Orioles with Matt Weeders being brought up for the minor leagues. He signed a one-year extension to his deal during the offseason and has an option for 2010. They have two switch hitting catchers. Back toward the middle on one hop into center field. That's the third hit of the night already for Baltimore. And Jay's talking to himself out there on the mound. Jay Happ in his last 11 appearances, five starts and six relief appearances, has an ERA of 3.18. He's been battling the last two outings. Last time out, he allowed five runs and five and two thirds. He seemed to settle in at one point. Well, he, he walked six. He walked six and three home run balls in that yep. game. But the Phillies, uh, that was a Sunday game. It's the only game they've won in this homestand. Delivers one low to Robert Andino. And among the rookies in the National League, he has the fourth best ERA. Ronald Belisario has a 2.23 ERA out of the bullpen for the Dodgers. And Dino hitting 241. And he hits one the opposite way, a base hit. Chase Utley tried to dupe Zahn, but he's going to continue on to third. The throw by Worth, not in time. And the Orioles have runners on first and third with nobody out. It looked like they played hit and run then. Because, uh, you know, Zahn, uh, Zahn was, it appeared Zahn was running. He's certainly not going to try and steal. And that was a hit and run, give, out, give it up swing right here. Yeah, they're playing hit and run. See him take a look in. And they did that really well. I mean, Andino did a great job of just making contact, shooting that ball through on the right side, because you're not going to get a, a catcher. No offense to the catcher, but you're not going to get him first to third on a ball like that unless he's running. Well, and Dave, even then it's an adventure. Well, and Dave Tremblay just said something to Juan Samuel. He, he just put two hands out and patted it up and down. And I guess he was telling him, look at look at Paul Baco on a diving grab. And there's out number one. I think he was telling Greg Zahn to hold up, but there's no doubt Greg Zahn had to hold up on that one. Well, Bergenson trying to bat, uh, bunt him over. And Baco makes a terrific play. One of our catchers can even see those things sometimes. He catch up with his bare hand first. No, he put the bare hand right on top of it to make sure it didn't come out. That's a terrific play. He had no time to take that mask no. off. No, and look at the helmets down over his eyes. That's really a good play. That's what I mean. You think it's hard to find that ball on a play like that when it's not hit that high. Well, he said he was such a good defensive catcher, and he is. Now the top of the order, here's Brian Roberts. Roberts singled in the top of the first. So one away, and the Phillies set up to try to turn two up the middle. Zahn on third, and Dino on first. Ahead, no balls and two strikes. Hey. 
mentioned last night that Brian Roberts holds the record for doubles by a switch hitter. Bird's eye seat. Pretty good spot if yeah. you can get a ticket. Not bad. Look more like a Blue Jay than an Oriole. He's still lingering. Can't find his way home. Pop up right field. Might be deep enough to score Zahn. Worth is under it. Zahn is tagging. Jason gets behind it. Zahn breaks and then stops. And Dino will go to second base, but the runner holds it third. It went over the head of the cutoff man, but it still got there quick enough to keep this game scoreless. Well, that was a good job by the Orioles and Jason Worth. You know, in a way, uh, they kind of deked him to make sure to, to say that he would see if he would throw all the way home. That's one of those situations where you want to try and throw it low enough that the cutoff man can get it, and then they'll tell him to cut it off so that that can't happen, that the guy go to second like that. And Dino reads that right away, that that's airmailed all the way to home plate, and that Dobbs has no chance to cut it off, even though he tried to fake that he was going to cut it off. Here it is again. Zahn just does not run well enough to try and score on that play. And that was good base running by Andino when he saw the high throw. So now Marquecas with two away, and he takes one off the outside corner. That was a slider from Jay Happ. Marquecas hit one sharply into a double play his first time up. That base running has any influence on what happens in this inning now. Whether they get another run out of it, whether there's a force out you can't get. But that was a nice play by Andino. They have arguably your best RBI guy at the plate here, too. Mm -hmm. Even though he's number two hitter. And that was a pretty good pitch. This guy's got a short swing. Very quick, short stroke. You can see why he's a good hitter. You have a swing like that, you don't get fooled that often. Three and one the count. Fish ain't biting right now. He's trying to get him to swing at some sliders and he won't go. Adam Jones waits on deck for Baltimore. Runners lead off second and third. They helped him out there. It's three and two. Fastball 91, but that was down and away. I don't know whether he was guessing or what there, Tom, which you know you should never do. 3 1, you ought to be locked into a zone because he didn't get a good swing and a hittable pitch. See what, right here, I mean, that's a, that's a pitch you can handle, but or take it. Chopper over the mound. Tough play coming. Utley's got it. Throws off balance just in time to get Marquez. And again, Jay Happ works out of a jam here at the top of the second inning. He has stranded five through the first two innings. The Phillies with a little bit of defense here in the second to keep this game scoreless.
would like to give your business the opportunity to team up and get a special visit to your office from the World Series Trophy. Be the office hero and motivate your staff to be all they can be. Enter the Take the Trophy to Work Day contest now at csnphilly.com. And there is the beautiful Tiffany Trophy. And you, know, you walk past the 1980 trophy, and they are so different. And that's what is so great about them because two very different teams brought home world championships for the Phillies. Yeah. 28 years apart. Those rings are a little different, too. Yeah, they are. Matt Stairs leads it off here in the bottom of the second inning. In the cleanup spot tonight. Yeah, Matt is making his seventh start overall. Six of the starts this year have been in right field. This is the first in left field. The Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Christy Fields of Nottingham, PA. If the Phillies hit a home run in tonight's ball game, then Christy will win $200. Introduce you to cafe coffees at McDonald's, and we'll have lattes, mochas, and cappuccinos. As everybody was filing by the lineup card, the dry erase board in the Phillies clubhouse, Matt Stairs wanted folks to take a picture of the lineup. And he hits this one in the air to straightaway center field. Jones is back. He's got room. And he makes the catch. The ball was down on the hands a little bit. And there's one away. Yeah, and he didn't get extended. See his arms come back towards his body a little bit. And even if you're as strong as Matt Stairs, it's really hard to hit a home run if you don't really get out, get out, get extension. And as Tom said, he really didn't hit it on the barrel. Brings Jason Worth to the plate. Ferguson is face four. He's retired for This guy looks like it's kind of hard to lift the ball on him. The way it sinks. He's really got movement. Jason riding a six game hitting streak. And the count one ball and one strike. Pretty good breaking ball. Looked like kind of a slurve. He didn't throw it real hard. But it had slider action to it. Late, late movement. I wonder too if the hesitation he has if that bothers the hitter also. Chopper toward third Wigginton. He throws out Jason and they're two away. Yeah that's a good point. He does kind of jump at the hitter. He's got that little kind of three quarter delivery too that a lot of sinker ballers. Uh, a lot of sinker ballers have that make it make the ball have that kind of action. A lot of ground outs, and that's not surprising watching this. Look who's number one. Roy Halladay. Kevin Millwood. Well, he didn't used to be like that. He didn't used to be a ground ball guy. He's pitching pretty well for the Rangers yeah. again. He was a fly ball pitcher yes, when he, he was, was in Philadelphia. Greg Dobbs the batter with two outs, and Dobbs hits one the other way, a foul ball. Just remember that game he pitched a no hitter against the San Francisco Giants. Millwood. All he threw were fastballs up and down the strike zone. See Dobson's numbers 186, three homers, seven RBIs. First start of the year at first base for the ill Ryan Howard. Felt comfortable with him at first base tonight because he played there during spring training. Managers always like that, you know, to have used guys. That's why they do it in spring training because if it happens during the season, they have a comfort level with a guy. And so, well, at least I've seen him out there and I know he can do it. Yeah, Charlie talked about that before the ball game today. Matt Stairs has played 287 games at first base for his career, but Charlie hasn't really seen him play there that much in person. Right. And speaking of in person, there is Ryan Howard, jacket on, towels wrapped around the arm. Still got the chills going. But it's good to see him at the ballparks. They were a little concerned about him last night yeah. when he had to go to the hospital. You can tell he's not right, you know, that smile working. Side one and two. Ryan has played in 342 straight games. It's the longest active streak in Major League Baseball. I don't think he's going to be playing tonight. Chopper toward the middle. That's going to sneak into center field. A base hit. First hit of the night for the Bills. And it comes with two outs here at the bottom of the second inning. Yeah, that's a plight of a sinker ball pitcher. They're going to throw their ground balls and they hope they're at somebody. So Ryan looking on and Greg Dobbs comes through with a base hit starting for Ryan at first base. And that breaks Pedro Feliz to the plate. 
Hey, you think about Ryan playing in 342 straight games. You know, how he's not in there because of an illness today, and it really, really magnifies Lou Gehrig and Cal Ripken Jr. in that streak. Amazing. Pedro just two for his last 17, but overall, he has had a good month. Hitting 303 here in the month of June, and he has been a nice catalyst for this club at the bottom of the order. In the air to center field, Adam Jones will go back, and he makes the grab, and he records two of the outs here in the bottom of the second inning. Philly Strad one. We play two here at Citizens Bank Park. Still no score. Forum section for all the information and please submit your answer on the subject line wheels You got to have a feel when you put these things together the question is who holds the major league record for games played and assists as a first baseman <laughs> If I just paying attention what we we're just talking about that might not be a bad guess Well, the answer will be revealed in the seventh inning and if you want to go that way go that way I'm not going to say that's my guess, but <laughs> That guy played a lot of games at first yeah, he base. Did. <laughs> he did. Well, we start the top of the third. Jay Happ has stranded five through the first two innings. No score. Facing Adam Jones, who walked his first time up. Happ has been helped out by some very good defense by his catcher, the second baseman, and his right fielder in the first two innings. Jones shows Bond. Yeah, that little dribbler that Marquez hit the end last inning. We had talked about possibly, uh, you know, the force play being eliminated by the over by the high throw, and you know, he may have been able to make an easier play with a force play. There, I don't know. With his momentum coming forward, he may have only had that play that he had. One and two, the count. Because he was coming forward so hard, he may have just had to go to first base. I don't know. But he did not have the option if the runner had been at first. Jones swings late and he gets a piece of it. Count holds one at two. Adam Jones, when he was drafted by the Seattle Mariners in the first round, they weren't sure if they were going to make him a fielder, a shortstop, or a pitcher. He was thrown in the 90s in high school. Pulls that one. Lees has it, has to hurry, and does. They got an out on the change up there, and that's a good sign for Jay Hat. When you can't follow the Phillies on Comcast Sportsnet, you can follow the action on your iPhone and iPod Touch with MLB.com at bat 2009. Visit Phillies.com on your iPhone or iPod Touch to purchase today. You were talking about a secondary pitches, Tom, and that uh, you and Rich Doobie were, were uh, going over that. And a change up, he really needs a change up to those right handed hitters. You think about it over the last few years, you've had Kyle Kendrick, J. 
Jay Happ, Antonio Bastardo. Those are three, just to name a few, that have had to really work on those secondary pitches here in the big leagues and not as much in the minor leagues. Tough play, tough school, too. It's a hard classroom up here. Well, that guy did a pretty good job on his, uh, his exam last night. Yeah, he hung in there after that second. He did a good job. Bring an the count to Aubrey Huff. Huff singled his first time up, so he's one for one. Wigginson waits on deck. Just missed with that one. Ball four. I think Baco wanted it. And that is the third walk issued by Jay Happ in this ball game. So Aubrey Huff is aboard. Wigginson walked his first time up. has 115 home runs for his career. And he and Aubrey Huff are two of the veterans that are kind of sandwiched around all these youngsters that the Orioles have in this lineup. I've spent a lot of years with the race when they were the devil rays on those bad teams they had down there. Uh, he's really found a, a second home now here with Baltimore and playing well for them and really contributing. He's the all time home run leader, hits leader, games played leader for the Tampa Bay Rays. Pop up. Center of the diamond. Wynn's going to take it to Chase up the side of the field. And he puts it away for the second out. Well, prior to the ball game tonight, Dan Baker, the Phillies public address announcer, asked the folks here at Citizens Bank Park for a moment of silence to honor the memory of the late Gary Papa, who passed away yesterday. Gary passed away at the age of 54 and Jamie Moyer who grew up in the Philadelphia area no doubt knew Gary Papa extremely well and what a beautiful round of applause yeah. after the moment of silence by the crowd here at the ballpark. Yeah really nice gesture very spontaneous. Luke Scott struck out his first time up. Takes that one high and while he did that we got a chance to see Dan Iasonia's uh, quick feet behind the plate. He did not trust Paul Bacco on that. <laughs> Umpires you know they stand still for the most part but something made him move. <laughs> that pitch came in high and he ducked. He looked like a hitter that gets fooled by a breaking ball and they get the knee bend that that lock. <laughs> Fly ball is shallow right field. Jason Worth coming on. And that's going to finish off this inning. So the Orioles strand just one in this inning, but they've shredded six through the first three. Go to the bottom of the third. No score.
Bar. Go to southwest.com. Grab your bag. It's on. Buy Acura. Acura. Advance. And buy AT&T. Your world delivered. Last of the third, Paul Bacco is the batter. 0 for 1 as a pinch hitter for the Phillies. This is his first start in a Phillies uniform. And he's celebrating his 37th birthday today. So happy birthday to Paul. Charlie just decided that, you know, in honor of his 37th birthday, he'd give him a start. Yeah. You think Charlie knew it was his birthday? No. <laughs> nor, nor did he care. <laughs> We'll tell him sometimes it was a guy's birthday. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> it's about all you can. That's all you got out of him. Yeah, he's yeah. not really, you know, not that big a deal to him. See, he's moved his pen. Maybe he's trying to change his luck too. Well, you see, he's wearing that jacket tonight because he hurt his wrist the other night in the dugout. He was telling me last night and showing it was all purple and swollen. His left wrist. Somebody bumped into him in the dugout before the game. He doesn't even know who it was. But that left wrist is pretty sprained. He wasn't the fanatic either. 2 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. And Bach goes down on strikes. One away. Oh, we just received a report that Brad Lidge has finished off his rehab assignment with Double A Redding. He started that game. Can't qualify for the victory, though, because he went just one. He allowed a hit, two strikeouts, 11 strikes. 11 of his 15 pitches were strikes. We're in a little bit of a rain delay, but they have restarted that ball game. And his half is retired on a 3 1 put out. But Rich Doobie was telling me before the ball game wheels that he would go one inning unless it was a really quick inning. And then if it was, you know, if he threw nine or ten pitches in one inning, they'd put him out there for a second one. But 15 is, you know, that's comfortable for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good uh, you know, normal closer. Mm -hmm. You're hoping it is. You know, they're going for especially a strikeout pitcher. Well, and if all goes well tomorrow, you know, see how he is after throwing today. He could be back with the Phillies when they take on the Rays this week. Yeah, he'll be on the airplane on Monday night. Jimmy Rollins, the batter, he's 0 for 1. Jimmy hit a one hopper to Robert Andino toward the hole at shortstop and was retired his first time up. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, how about this? The Tampa Bay Rays got homers from Carlos Pena and Ben Zobrist. They defeated the Mets three to one. That's a good sign for the Phillies, who began play tonight two games up in the East. And with Santana pitching that game today, he was a lot better. He gave up that home run to Pena, made it two to one. Then they had a well, that was maybe what over an, at least over an hour rain delay, was probably disrupting some people's dinner plans. <laughs> Three had won the count. Well, the sky here is gorgeous right now. A little breeze coming in from left to right. It's turned out to be rather comfortable for the moment here in Philadelphia. A little looper back a third, and Dino on the run makes the basket catch. What a play by Robert and Dino to rob Jimmy Rollins of a base hit. Well, Robert Andino's made some pretty good plays so far this ball game, but none better than this one to Rob J. Roll here in the home.
Philadelphia on Monday, July 6th for a four-game series. On the 7th of July, it's the Verizon Phillies Beach Towel, free to fans 14 and under. Don't forget that real good fireworks show brought to you by Independence Blue Cross will take place Thursday, July 9th. That's after the ball game. You can order your tickets now by logging on to phillies.com. <laughs> Top of the fourth inning, no score. Gary Matthews joins us after another successful book sale today. <laughs> Greg Zahn will lead it off for the Orioles. And he takes a pitch high. It's 1-0. Not going to go there, are you? How did the book sale go today? Well, we only had one customer. <laughs> He's going to give him a book, and he just said, hey, forget it. He wants to see a victory instead. He thought you were Jason Stark because Jason Stark was here signing his book today about the Phillies' run to the World Championship. A little competition. Never hurt anybody. Don't think so. Different perspective. 2 0 is taken for a strike. Well, this game here now, Philly should have some incentive looking at Tampa beating the New York Mets. They can pick up a game, get it back up to three games. And again, sometimes you need some incentive. And this would be one. Outside, three and one. Uh, it looked to be a pretty good pitch. So it happens though when you're not around the plate consistently, you don't get those close pitches. Ball four. And oh. half has walked four now in this game. And those are two pretty close pitches. Well, before the ball game, if you missed our open, Sarge was out at the newsstand reading from his book and saying that. Trying to get people to come and purchase the book. Now, the last time Sarge was signing his book and, and selling them down in the concourse, <laughs> Sammy was not a patron. Thank you, Sammy. But we thought since uh, that was the last time the Phillies won a game that we would try to try the same luck and get Sarge down on the concourse again. Well, let's see if it works. Okay? I hope it does. If it works, then I don't mind you selling books every day. Paul okay. Bocco out to the mound to talk to Jay Happ as he's missing a little bit here in the top of the fourth. Yeah, I don't know where he wants the ball to actually be because those last three pitches, the ones on the outside corner there, were, I thought, strikes. That one is down, and Happ was kind of. Shaking out his wrist out on the mound. I don't know if he's got any kind of cramp or something go, and there's a strike, and it's one ball and one strike. Robert Andino singled his first time up right through the hole on the right side. Playing shortstop for Cesaris Torres, who had a, an apodectomy. He'll be out for a little bit. Good changeup. One and two. Thing about Jay Happ, he does have the stop. This is a good changeup. That ball breaks down and in, but you got to try and pitch ahead, and it makes your other pitches that much more effective. I mean, obviously, he's not trying to walk him, but here in the major leagues, you got to be able to get that done. Good and then he comes back with that high fastball, and Andino can't catch up to it. Yeah, that's what you want: is the players to be swinging at your ball that aren't necessarily strikes, more anxious. That's a good fastball. Out over the zone there. You can see this ball as it goes away. Good fastball. Good location. Ferguson bunts it right back to the mound. Half has it. Thought he had a play at second. Instead goes to first. And he got the sure out. Zahn stumbled around that second base bag. And the sacrifice is successful. Well, it's time to take a look at our Firestone leaders. Jay Happ, four wins, second only to Chiron Martis of the Washington Nationals, who's really been locked on five for quite some time. Firestone, a tradition of innovation. Thought he had plenty of time to get the runner going to second base. The ball bunted back hard to Happ. When that ball bunts, gets bunted back hard to the pitcher there, you don't have to go left or right. That's your your cue there to throw that ball. To second base. 
Now he spun and took a look, so that was his decision, not Paul Bacco's decision. Uh, and, and he might have been saying first base, first base. Roberts one for two, singled his first time up to left. Nice play by Bacco to keep that ball in front of him. Well, anytime you can get the lead running, that ball bunted right back to him hard. Now you see that there is plenty of time there. You see right where the runner is. Plenty of time to get him, but he decides maybe to go on and go to first because maybe he didn't have a good grip on that ball. Well, it did rain a lot here today. The tarp was on the field, but the field is taking an awful lot of moisture. Look out. Oh, boy. That ball was crushed. Uh. And I think everybody's okay except for maybe the railing down there. They're looking for the ball. <laughs> ball shot down the stairs into the uh, the photographer's pit. Well, it had some hook on it and also going down. And thank goodness it went down hard. Awkward swaying and Robert stays alive. You see guys coming out of the zone though because half is a hit. So now he's getting. The hitters are swinging pitches normally that they would if they were ahead in the count. Always somewhat of a little bit of a chess match when pitcher and hitter are facing each other. On the hands, a looper caught out of the air by Pedro Feliz. So Jay Happ strands another runner. This one in scoring position at second base. He's through four. We head to the bottom of the fourth with no score on the board. Call 1 800 Jeff now. By Ford Fusion Hybrid, the most fuel efficient midsize. Drive one today. And by Coca Cola, the official soft drink of the Philadelphia Phillies. Sold out crowd here at Citizens Bank Park. It rained most of the day, but blue skies. Pretty nice sky right now. Uh, Shane Victorino starts it off in the bottom of the fourth inning. Phillies have managed just to hit against Brad Bergeson. Torino grounded out to shortstop his first time up. The one hit was a single by Greg Dobbs. And a fly ball to center field. Adam Jones. Makes his third put out of the night. Time now for our Geico quote of the day. And it comes from Shane Victorino on the Philly struggles. We're all human. We all get frustrated. That's just the nature of the beast. We're not frustrated to the point where we're throwing in the towel, but we're frustrated because we know we're a better team than that. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit us at Geico.com or call 800 947 Auto. And Sarge, this team is. You know, had some misplays during this homestand. 
And I, you know, as a former player, you can get into slumps in every aspect of this game, including the mental part of the game. Well, you're absolutely right. Just like hitting is, is contagious a lot of times, same as guys making a lot of air, that base running at times. But the one good thing through it all, they're still in first place. So there is a silver lining there at the end of the story, even though they're not playing very well, guess what? There's some other clubs that aren't playing as good as the Phillies. One and one the count to Utley. And I guess I guess some other clubs who would want to switch places with the Phillies. Well, there's no doubt. Again, you know, they still have a chance today to or tonight to gain a, yep. a, a ball game. So as long as you have the lead, the other team is looking up at you. That's where you want to be. Chase hits it in the air. Foul, third base side. Wigginton will give it a look. Well, is there anything, Sarge, to you know, to get yourself out of the mental slump that you might be in? I mean, is, is it just playing the game? Well, this is collectively as a team that the way that they've been playing it become very difficult to start to win. Uh, ball games, but you got to take it one inning at a time, one at bat at a time, and get yourself back in a groove. And if you can do that, good things are going to happen. Chased out on strikes. That's the second out and the second strikeout for Ferguson. So two away. Well, and I guess the the biggest thing is that once you have a few good games under your belt we saw Jimmy Rollins he's normally the catalyst for this team and he has struggled this year but once you have a few good teams as games as a group then it gets the ball rolling in a positive direction yeah it does though but different positions J Row is a player that if he's fielding he's still valuable obviously more valuable if he's hitting the ball but he has the luxury in that particular position to be uh, just defensive guy. sure you want him to be able to hit and We've seen him. Hit. He's more of an all-around type player. Want to know the count to Matt Stairs and fly to center his first time up. Oh gosh, now he's guessing behind home plate. All those balls there, <laughs> little sinkers that are going down. He's got to get the ball up. Guess ball there. Yeah. Well, sometimes you know, umpires are human too. They go on sound. Sounds loud. Sounds loud. Should be a strike. But he does have a lot of movement on his pitches. But those are going to be strikes all night long. I would just tell the up, boy, this is going to be a long night. Or a short one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> boy. Three and two, the couch of stairs. Well, he's done that quite a bit. Two and two for the left hander's coming in with that backdoor slider. Been peppering that outside part of the plate with a sinker on the left handers. Fly ball, shallow left field. Long run for Luke Scott, but he's there. And he puts it away. That ball carried a little bit more than I even thought it would. And the Phillies are retired in order here in the fourth inning. That's seven in a row, retired by Bergeson. They played.
finish the Phillies game with Marshall Harris and former Phillies closer Mitch Williams' extensive game breakdown, plus player reactions with Kevin Walsh on Slow Toyota Presents, Phillies Post Game Live after the game, only on Comcast Sportsnet. It's cooled off just a little bit here at the ballpark. Some of the crowd still in the sunshine as Nick Markakis leads it off. As we said, it was raining most of the day. They had the uh, finals today of the pitch hit and run here at Citizens Bank Park. Did you ever do that, Sarge, when you were younger? No, sure didn't. Sure didn't. Oh, with two the counts of Arcagas. Well, kids from the Delaware Valley today were competing in all different age groups. I know one of my neighbors was here, eight year old RJ Weesey, and he finished a third wow. in the eight year old category today. Down holds, no balls, and two strikes. I always thought that was good. those were fun. Uh, those were yeah. fun events. The pitch hit and run, and also the uh, punt, pass, and kick for football. No, oh, those are fun, and as, as it's good competition. Let you know exactly where you are with kids around your same age. Yeah. Yeah. Call strike three. Markakis down looking. That's a pretty good pitch from Jay Happ. Third strikeout of the night for Jay. And what a way here in the top of the fifth. Uh, just needs to really get away from those walks. But take a look at this curveball there. You can see right back on his heels. So you can tell that was a good one. Nothing he can do about it. Good pitch. Adam Jones lays down a butt. Going to be a tough play for Feliz. Bare hands, throws off balance, not in time. Adam Jones has got real good speed, and he just beat that one out. Plain and simple. Not a whole lot Pedro could have done on that one. Play no. back a little bit. Well, your third hitter, too, going on and bunting the ball. I'm sure the Bills will take that. Usually that third hitter is that guy that you know that has good speed. Hit the ball out of the ballpark. Nothing, nothing game. The third hitter, fourth, fifth hitter. You might want to try and take your chance on hitting the ball out of the ballpark unless you're getting ready to steal a base. Yeah, I'm looking at that and marveling at his speed. But you know, you bring up a good point. He's the number three hitter, <laughs> although they're trying to get base runners in a scoreless game. But you think he could pop it out of the park if they needed to? Aubrey Huff to left center field. Victory on the run. It's telling away from him. And it splits the gap and heads to the wall. And now Jones, after that leadoff bunt, is around third and he's going to score. An RBI double for Huff. So it pays off for the Orioles. Yeah, it sure did pay off for them. And again, that ball hit in a gap, and as soon as it was hit, you can tell Victor Reno away from that ball. And as that ball again, left hander hitting the ball, ball's going to move away and go toward the left field side, exactly what it did. See high fives of Jones. Nothing anyone can do about this. Now watch exactly where this ball is. High hanging ball. Ball gets away, and you see right in a bad area where a fast runner is able to come all the way around. From first base and Jones scoring the first run of the game. And I'll break Ty Wiggins at the plate for with a runner on second. So do you think differently now about that bunt play? No, I'm saying for, for me, for the third hitter, I like those guys swinging away definitely and trying to drive double. You, you mentioned about his speed, you know, but if he's bunting and thinking about stealing, that's a different scenario. But for me, with a guy with power, third spot. You know, I want him swinging away. Same like with Utley. I like him driving the ball out because he can hit the ball out of the ballpark. Especially in games that are 0 0. That went off the end of the bat and the count two and one. Now, there's some of the speed that you're talking about as it hits that gap and he's off and flying now. He does have great speed. Long legs and he scores easily as he comes trotting in across home plate. He had a good view of that too. You could see where he started to accelerate where he, when he knew Victorino wasn't going to get to that ball. Yeah, any ball that's in front of you, you don't need the coach. You're looking at the ball. You know your speed. There's the judgment there, and you can go all the way around. Juan Samuel, third base coach, very aggressive base runner himself. Three and two. That's a strike of the knees from Jay Happ. 
Wiggins had walked his first time up and popped out the second. There's Juan Samuel, the former Phil. Oh boy, he could fly. Lifetime 259 hitter with 396 stolen bases. Up is going to be held at third as Stairs gets to that quickly. It's a single for Wiggins. Wasn't sure if that ball was going to be stopped by yeah. Pedro Feliz. Yeah, he actually almost either froze or broke back the other way. Once Samuel saw that, even though Stairs doesn't have a great arm in left field. Now, watch him there at second, how he just stops it, up, up, and then he goes on to go. Once you start that little bit too late, right away, Juan Samuel, third base coach, was holding him up. Juan Samuel, who last year was Inducted into the Phillies Wall of Fame. Got a chance to talk to Sammy last year, and the Orioles were nice enough to allow him to come to Philadelphia for those ceremonies. He's a good baseball man and was a good player when he played. Three time All Star, hit 161 home runs for his career. Wow. He was a good player. It's good, good to have on your team. Any of those guys with really good speed, you like having on your team. Luke's got the batter with runners on the corners. And he hits one off the end of the bat foul. I swear Hat needs to go to work. Needs a strikeout here. Doesn't need that sacrifice fly. 4 6 3 will also work. It's just unfortunate though that Bills doesn't have a lot of strikeout guys, but this is a situation that, you know, those pitchers, veteran pitchers there, you go for that strikeout. Pretty good percentage there for Luke Scott. He's only fouled one time in seven opportunities with a runner on third and less than two outs. Fouled to get that runner home. And that tells you then, and he puts that ball in play the majority of the time. Call strike three, and there's the strikeout you were talking about, Sarge. Luke Scott thought it was low, but he painted the outside part of the play with it. Yeah, he thought it was low because he hasn't been calling that particular pitch. That's a good pitch, though. Freezes the hitter. Scott might have been looking breaking ball, but look at that fastball and maybe just a little bit off the corner, but hey, that works. Good hold too by Baco. Good frame and Baco does that. Will frame the pitches. There's Greg Zahn. Yeah, a lot of times too, the umpire looks to see whether or not you're jerking that ball in and when you just softly just catch it, kind of leave it right there. You can get some calls. Good pitch there by Hap. Jay has thrown himself a lot of pitches in this ball game. Rich Duby though would love pitch number 89 to be the final out of this inning. Someone said it's a strike. He'll take that. Well, it's very simple in today's game. Once you start to see a lot of pitches and Hap does have them, you know that you're going to have to be using your bullpen. So Charlie will start thinking about that. And a good sized crowd here at Citizens Bank Park. It's going to be another sellout. And the Phillies fans are hoping that their team can get out of this uh, this doldrum that they're in. One in six on this homestand. It'll be the 27th sellout of the year for the Phillies here at this ballpark. Broken back roller left side. Feliz has it. Has plenty of time, and the inning is over. Hap does give up a run, but he strands two more. He is now stranded nine through five. But as we go to the bottom of the fifth, he trails it one nothing.
be conversation starters. The replica ring paperweight or acrylic cube. Great for displaying at home or in the office. Both items are made using lead-free pewter featuring Swarovski crystals. I don't think I said that right. Available exclusively through the Phillies. Order at the Majestic Clubhouse store at Citizens Bank Park or call 877-GO-PHILLS. Swarovski crystals. Yeah, crystals. Close enough. Swarovski. I practiced it before the ball game too, Sarge. Still got it wrong. Yeah. It's okay though. Jason Ward right. leads it off here in the bottom of the fifth. We probably should have asked Greg and Charlie, who did our open today, to, to pronounce that, that word for me. Oh, boy. They, they did a pretty good job on that. A very nice job. Line drive down the right field line. That'll slice foul. Well, Charlie's been here for a long time. He's, you know, he's watched you over the last couple of years. Greg, I mean, he's got the looks, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah, well, Greg took yeah. over the show, and he uh, actually used a little bit of your makeup. Yeah, he did. There's Charlie. Got to get that shine off the top of your head. <laughs> one, one pitch to Earth. One fish in, and it's one and two. There's a lack of concentration swing. More frustration. You know, the guy's throwing again. Sinkers or, or, or your sliders, if you don't want to move up. Toward him, what you got to do is make sure that that ball is up. Jason, as we mentioned yesterday, is a former number one pick for the Baltimore Orioles back in 1997. As their number two prospect a couple of different times. Gave, it, gave up a scholarship to the University of Georgia to sign his contract with the O's. Worked out for him. He hits that one off the foot of Bergeson and a nice play by Andino to throw out worth one six three on the put out. Oh boy. That's just bad luck. Period. Plain and simple. Smokes the ball going right up the middle. Looks like it either hit him on his foot. They obviously didn't bother him because he didn't go down at all. Hanging slider. He gets it, yep, right off the foot. And lo and behold, right to the shortstop. And that's what you call bad luck. Take a look at it again. That ball heading right up the middle. Worth smokes it. Not able to beat it out, however. That's how hard he hit that ball. Greg Dobbs takes the first pitch low. 1-6-3 if you're scoring. That is bad luck, though. I mean, because Jason... Really ripped that ball oh, hard. After getting two strikes, battling and hitting the ball the way he should up the middle. This will be a little easier play for Andino, who has been very busy tonight for the Orioles. And two away. He has been involved in six different plays. He has four assists and two putouts in this evening's game. Two outs, bottom of the fifth. Pedro Feliz, the hitter. Pedro Sky to center his first time up. Well, not throwing very hard, but very effective with that movement so far. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard. Cardinals have defeated the Royals seven to one. Albert Pujols, his 24th home run, a two-run shot. Royals today sent down Kyle Davies, the former Braves prospect. They've been with them the last couple of years. Well, that's when it becomes devastating if you go down without an injury after you've been in the major leagues two, three years, and then find yourself trying to fight back up to the major leagues. Kind of test your character, if you will. In the air down the left field line over into foul territory and Dino is there puts it away 
And it's the final out here of the fifth inning. And Dino had a hand in every out here at the bottom of the fifth inning. Phillies retired in order once again, and Robert Andino will lead it off for the. Park ready to pound the ball for the Phillies offense. The team's newest long ball threat is connecting at a consistent rate and driving in runs regularly. Jason became the fourth Philly to reach double digits in home runs this season, and he is on pace to break his own single season mark. Worth's power performance is brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. We're here for you every step of the way. Well, back here at Citizens Bank Park at a 1-0 Orioles lead. Robert Andino will lead it off in the top of the sixth inning. And Andino has been very busy at shortstop for the Baltimore Orioles in tonight's ball game. And I guess if you're Dave Tremblay, you don't really care what he does offensively because he's played a pretty good game defensively. And he smokes one toward right field, backing up his worth. He can't get it. It's off the base of the wall. Jason has it, but Andino's at second base. With a leadoff double here in the top of the sixth inning. Well, the old expression when it rains, it pours, and just can't seem to really get it going. Line drives being hit over the heads. Wow, Sarge, you're a prophet. Well, here we go on this replay right here. Gonna be a line drive, and Dino just smokes the ball. Again, that ball's up in the zone, throwing a lot of fly balls as that eludes Worth, tries to get it, and keeps him right there at second base. Well, and Bergeson's on to try to bunt him over, and he takes the pitch for a strike to throw behind Andino. And he's back in there diving. Ferguson bunts it left side, half off the mound, looks at third, and he gets the out at first. So the sacrifice is successful. Second straight sacrifice for Ferguson. Yeah, there's one away. The Phils do have bullpen action as Hap has thrown 94 pitches. Chad Durbin's up and loosening now. Here in the top of the sixth inning. Hap actually looked at third base, but that's one of those plays when you bunt the ball hard and you bring. The third baseman in. That's what you want to have happen. Even though Hap got the ball, he had to go on and go to first. Simple. No one was at third, and Felice has to come in just in the event that Hap doesn't get the ball. Well, now Sarge, they're playing the infield in with one out here in the top of the sixth, and Roberts sends it in the air to center field. That should be deep enough yep. to score Andino. Victorino's under it, makes the catch, and Dino can walk home from third. And the Orioles lead it two to nothing. Yeah, there we're talking again about the fly balls that J.A. Happ throws. Doesn't get a, a lot of ground ball because he keeps the ball up in the zone. Ground balls, you got to get the ball down. So run scored for Andino. 
And check this bunt out. The bunt is bunting hard, and that's what you want to do. Now, you see Felice had to come on in. Now, if he stays over at third, they may have a play. Ha takes a look, but to no avail, and end up costing him a run with the uh, fly ball. You know, Sarge, we saw earlier in this homestand, the Blue Jays pulled off a 1-5-3 double play where Scott Rowland on a play like that backed off and went back to the third base back. If you know your pitcher can get over there to get the ball, a guy like Greg Maddox would automatically be going over to that bag, and you know they're going to get there quick. You can take the chance and stay at home. One and one the count to Marcakis. And it's two and one. Each run becomes bigger and bigger, especially when fighting fields aren't hitting the ball the way that they're capable of hitting the ball. As a team, when you're hitting the ball hard, you put a little fear in that pitcher. And right now, he's really settling down and throwing those sinkers. Although Hat needs to really keep it right here in Bay until that offense can, can start clicking. Well, he has just thrown his 100th pitch of the night, and the count is full 3 2. Line drive that's going to slice toward the gap in left center field. Victorino gets to it quickly and he'll hold Mark Kakis to a single. That's his third hit of the series, first of the game. And Mark Kakis is aboard. Rich Doobie continues to chart the spots and the pitches. Yeah, I don't the, think he's close to going to get him for Chad Durbin, but he'd like to see him get out of the sitting here. Uh, well, he gets predictable. 3 2. He hasn't been throwing off speed pitches. He throws one, and gets the ball whacked in the center field. Jones reached on a bunt single his last time up. He's one for two with a walk. Well, he's having a good year, 12 home runs, 42 RBIs with that 300 average. The Mariners included him in the deal for Eric Bedard. He was kind of the centerpiece of that deal, but they felt like they had too many outfielders because they had Ibanez in left, Ichiro in center. I'm not, or Ichiro in right. I'm not sure who they had in center that Adam Jones couldn't supplant eventually. Well, you never can tell. They might have reports even in their own organization on the kid and not really giving him the props that he should. And when they grade them out, and if they're low grades, they think the guy's is, is, is good for trade bait. Well, and he was making the transition from shortstop to center field, so that could have been part of it too. Takes the first strike. It's one and two. Now in Seattle probably just didn't want to wait, you know, that long. Didn't have room for him to develop in the outfield. So it was a pretty nice match to be able to go to Baltimore and develop and play every day. Now Seattle thinks they made a mistake. Little number in front of the plate. This will be a tough play. Half off the mound. Has to hurry, and it's not in time. That's an infield single for Jones. Rich Dewey coming out just to settle them down. Here's a little bit more speed there with this Jones kid. Well, he got the ball in fine fashion, a little bit long in trying to throw, but he just beat that ball, clearly beat the ball, and he calls him own self safe. So a conversation at the mound with Rich Dewey and Jay Happ and the rest of the infielders, all but Greg Dobbs. See the numbers on. Jay Happ, four walks, 10 hits, 14 base runners so far in this ball game with two outs here in the sixth. And hey, if he gets out of this inning here, it's only a two run deficit going into the bottom of the sixth. Yeah, which would really be good. Right, check this out. Last time up, again, the ball are up in the zone. And when you get them up in the zone, a little easier to hit the ball as Jones comes around to score the first run of the game. Aubrey Huff now the batter 
after that RBI doubles last time up. And that one nearly got away from Paul Bacco. And it's 1 0. Decent numbers, nine home runs. Having a good year. I think Baco is crossed up for the second time as he'll go out to the mound and talk to Jay Happ. Sarge, this Orioles team came in with nine wins on the road, but they have scored 43 runs now, counting tonight, in their last seven games. Yeah, well, they're, they're playing better. Now, this is the first pitch of the at bat. You see that ball almost got away from Baco. That's a strike, and it's two and one. Second pitch kind of handcuffed him as well, but he was able to handle it. Yeah. There is that second pitch. Curveball, and then you can see that he crossed him up. He was looking neater on the inside part. See the way he turned his glove to catch the ball. Should be the inning as Matt Stairs goes back, now has to come in, and he makes the catch, and the inning is over. And the Orioles strand two, they've stranded 11, but they've scored twice. And they lead the Phillies 2 0 as we go to the middle of the sixth. Honda. You can depend on your Honda dealer for great leases and low fought financing. By WB Mason. Who but WB Mason for amazingly low office product prices. And by McDonald's. Introducing McDonald's McCafe coffees. Try hot or cold ice mochas, lattes, and cappuccinos. McDonald's. I'm loving it. Last of the sixth inning, Paul Bacco leads it off and he rips one into right field up base in. Just the second hit of the night for the Phillies. As the rain starts to come down a little harder, Paul Baco leads this inning off with a base hit, and that's going to send Jay Happ to the showers. John Mayberry is going to pinch hit. So Jay Happ's night is done after six innings for the Phillies. Pretty good hit by Paul Baco, getting that sinker up a little bit. He's a low ball hitter anyway. Take a look at the bullpen. It's Chad Durbin there. Well, Chad had been loosening up, so we assume he's going to come into the ball game. He'll be the next pitcher for the Phillies. Chad Mayberry, six hits at 18 at bats, and he was nearly hit by that pitch. And it's 1 0. And Sarge Ferguson is 23 years old, 4 and 2. Good ERA in his first yeah. year in the big leagues, but you face guys like this who you expect, all right. We're probably going to get a boatload of hits against this guy, a chance to win it. He's a rookie pitcher, and then you don't get anything. Yeah. I and mean, what's that night like? Oh, it's just, it's very, very frustrating because you know a guy that's not throwing the ball very hard. 86, 88 for his fastball. A little bit of a slider has been the only two pitches, but 
they haven't seen him before. But even so, you really feel that you'd be able to mount up an attack on him and frustrate him when, when you can't. And it's not as if <laughs> you're going to see the bullpen anytime soon unless he self destructs because that was only a 67th pitch of the night. Well, he's been getting those first pitch strikes, been getting ground outs around the plate. Dave Tremblay is manager. Try to stay dry in that Orioles dugout. Two and one the count to John Mayberry Jr. Pulls it towards shortstop. This could be two. And Dino to second for one. Roberts real quick to first. And it is two. A 6 4 3 double play. Two outs. Well, one or two times you get that leadoff hitter on, and that was a good pitch he swung at. Got a little bit long on that particular ball as they turned the 6 4 3 double play. But that's where you want the ball to be up, though. That's a good pitch to swing up because it was up in the zone. That'll leave things for Jimmy Rollins here in the sixth. And Jimmy takes one on the outside corner. Boy, he's been able to paint that just about all night and in a pretty good spot. J. Rowe, his numbers. Much better hitter than what it's shown. He lines that one foul to the seats down the right field line, and it's 0 2. Well, J. Rowe, one of those kind of leadoff hitters for me that, you know, he's more of a slugger, not a guy that's going to be working the count. I mean, he can take pitches, but for the most part, he's going to be a guy that will hit in that leadoff spot as opposed to walk. It's that one of the air to right. Markakis misread it initially, but he has plenty of time to recover, and Ferguson. Is now through six innings. He's allowed just two hits here at Citizens Bank Park, and he has a two nothing lead. Well, the rain has let up a little bit, but the Baltimore Orioles have. Boy, they left a lot of men on base here tonight. And Philly's still in the game, just trailing two to nothing. They have done basically nothing with Berger tonight. Aubrey Huff has an RBI double. Roberts with the sacrifice fly. And Burgesson, six innings, no walks, two strikeouts. And he has had some great support tonight from Robert Andino, his shortstop. Chad Durbin will come on. Behind Jay Happ, who had one of those hang in there games 
a lot of base runners, but only two runs, Tom. Yeah, in fact, he allowed 10 hits and four walks, and now he'll give way to Chad Durbin. Facing Ty Wigginton is one for two, and count as no balls and one strike to Wigginton. This is one of those games where you go, ooh, could this be a lot worse? Yeah, considering that the bases were loaded in the first inning and the Orioles didn't score, they had second and third in the second and didn't score. In the air, shallow right center field, Utley on the run, can't get it. And it drops right beyond him. And Wigginton has a looping single, his second hit of the day. And when you're going good, so you catch those, and when you're going bad, the other guys catch yours. Yeah, and that Ber is baseball. Yeah, Bergeson's had a lot of those plays where his team has, yep. has gotten them gotten to them, and that was a tough play for Chase. Sure. Oh, yeah, that's a base hit. Here it is. This ball's right off the end of the bat. And uh, Utley has no chance to get to this. He turned one way, turned back the other way, and can't get there. But that Andino tonight has been unbelievable in the field for the Baltimore Orioles. He made a great catch over his shoulder. Great play off the ball that was hit by Jason Worth off the foot of Bergeson. Now Luke Scott, the batter, he's ahead in the count, 1 0. Scott's 0 for 3. He started the game with a really good play on Jimmy Rollins to take a hit away from him. Plus, He'd been on base and uh, he doubled and scored their second run. So he's had a nice game for them. You got a ground ball pitcher out there tonight, like that kid who's pitching for them. You need an infielders to catch a ball, and uh, they've been able to do that pretty well. 27th sell out of the year, 44,939 here at the ballpark. And they have. Sat through a few raindrops the last inning or so. Yeah, and the biggest cheers they've had tonight were when the fanatic ran the bird off the field. <laughs> Orioles mascot was throwing their flag around. Reminds me of that story about Vuk. You know that story about Vuk and the Baltimore bird? He liked that bird? Phillies got swept. Because uh, he Baltimore. liked mascots. Well, that got swept in Baltimore, and the bird was up on the dugout with a broom. Uh oh. <laughs> so the game ended, and after a while, <laughs> Vuk went into the mascot room. This kid was sitting there, evidently, you know, on, the, on a stool. And Vuk went in there in full fury. Said, Hey, where's that bird? <laughs> and the kid said, Oh, he's gone. He left. The guy left. Well, you tell him, and I can't say what he said. That was the bird <laughs> sitting there on the stool. He was smart enough to sweat, say sweat yeah, dripping. He was smart enough to say <laughs> that the real bird that the bird had left. Back toward the middle, off the body of Durbin, and that's going to be a, a base hit for Luke Scott. See the way it's going. When things don't go right, boy, it's amazing in this game. All the weird stuff that happens, and when it's going right, then that stuff happens for you. That could have been a double play. It could have obviously bounced towards somebody. But it doesn't. And here you go. Scott hits it hard. It's a breaking ball. That go off his glove. It looked like it did. Ron Reed used to make this play all the time when he was with the Phillies. He turned around and he was so uh, so athletic he could reach around, grab those behind his back. In that case, it looked like it bounced off Chad's glove, or maybe it didn't because they're giving him some they're giving him some time to throw. So it must have gone off his body somewhere. Well, that could have been a six-three double play. There's Scott Sheridan. Philly's athletic trainer, he and Rich Doobie are, I would think, about to make a decision as to whether they're going to go out and check him out. Scott was signaling to his hand. Doobs was signaling to his leg, and now Rich Doobie just signaled to the wrist, and here they come. And the race is on. It looks like it, it hit him somewhere. Around that right hand or wrist, I think he's saying he's okay. Yeah, if you can't feel your fingers, it's not too hot. And that's what they want to make sure he can. Here's another look at it, and you'll see him spin around and try and catch it with his glove behind his back. But his hand was there. And they looked at his hand yeah. right away. See him immediately look at his hand. That's a great job with the slow mo there. You can really see what happens. Here's another look and hit him on his bare hand on his pitching. Yeah, as he turned his body, his hand went with his body. Yeah, I never got to the glove in the track of that ball. So nobody out, two runners on. And Greg Zahn will bat left handed for the first time tonight. At least trail at 2 0. 12 hits so far 
in this game for Baltimore. Line drive, base hit to left center field. They're going to hold Wigginton at third as the throw comes over the head of Dobbs. Wigginton had held up just in case Jimmy had caught that ball. And that is the second hit of the night for Zahn. One right handed, one left handed. Well, the bases are now loaded here in the seventh inning. Well, these lucky fans are tonight's Citizen Seven. They will each receive a prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Citizens Bank with the most seven day branches in the Philadelphia area. To find a branch near you, visit citizensbank.com. Phillies so have to make a decision now on what to do with the infield, whether to play in or to play back for two and give up another run, and they're going to play back for two. As Tyler Walker gets up to loosen, it's just a two nothing deficit right now for the Phillies, but you know, the offense has struggled to score runs. And Dino flails and bounces a foul. Well, oh, they're also looking at the pitcher on deck. We, they're not going to hit for him. So, uh, you know, the feeling is if you can somehow get lucky enough to get two here, give up a run, you can get the pitcher out and you're out of a base loaded, nobody out with one run. And that's the thing. And we'll see what happens. What the Orioles have done with runners in scoring position. The Phillies haven't had anybody in scoring position because they have just two two hits tonight. And Dino two for three. Doubled and scored his last time up. And the count one and two. Big strikeout right there by Chad Durbin as Andino's down swinging one away here at the top of the seventh inning. Yeah, again, to chase a bad ball, too, a fastball up. There it is, a high fastball out of the strike zone. Got him. Now Burgess and chops one toward third. Could be two. Feliz to the plate for one. Baco to first. Not in time. Boy, that guy really busted it down the line. Sure did. And Chad Durbin has given Charlie Relliford a little piece of his mind, thinking that that play should have been called an out at first base. It was close. There have been a couple of them tonight. But Ferguson really busted down that line and made it a close play. I think this is going to be a double play ball. Hit it decent, too. It's not a dribbler. It's on one quick hop. Pedro gets it to Baco quickly. He gets out of there and throws it hard to first. Looks like the tie went to the runner. Well, the bases are loaded now for Brian Roberts. Phillies play the infield back, and there's a strike. It's 0 yeah, 1. Well, now they got to the point finally with two outs. You know they've survived to this point. They're trying to do it again. Dodge another bullet, Tom. Roberts sack fly is last time up. The time is called. Good numbers for Roberts with the bases loaded, a 342 hitter. He's got a runner at third, runner at second. That's Zahn over at first, Ferguson. And it's two and one. Charlie hoping that his squad can get out of another tough jam. 
Jay Happ worked out of a bases loaded jam in the first inning. Three and one the count. And now Durbin's got to give Roberts a pitch that's good, good enough for the second baseman to hit. And let's see what he does. Well, he threw a three, a two, oh, two one. I think it was a changeup. He did the changeup or breaking ball. And now he's really got himself in a spot where he's got to probably come in with something. Ball four, and he forces it a run. Three nothing Baltimore. Bases loaded walk, second RBI for Roberts. And the Orioles have a three zip lead here at the top of the seventh inning. And here's Nick Marcake is another tough batter. He's one for four tonight. And he takes a slider for strike one. Off speed pitch and it's 0 and 2. That fooled him. Well, that was a changeup that he threw 3 2 1 and uh, missed with it. And uh, Roberts didn't swing and they got in a spot where he had to throw a fastball and miss with that. Baltimore, despite their struggles, 7 and 3 this year in interleague play. And a called strike three. Marquez is rung up for the second time tonight. The Orioles strand the bases loaded but get another run. Time to stretch here in Philadelphia with the O's leading at three nothing. Holds the major league record for games played and assists by a first baseman. Well, it's a guess because you brought up Cal Ripken earlier in the, the consecutive game streak, and, the, and then he broke Lou Gehrig's record. So I'll say Lou Gehrig. I don't know. I would have thought Lou Gehrig. Wills. Well, it just kind of fit. Yep, it doesn't fit here. The answer is Eddie Murray. Wow, a famous Baltimore Oriole. Log back on to Phillies.com to find out if you're the winner of a Phillies prize pack. Thanks for playing Dodge Stump the fans. Hall of Famer anymore. Hall of Famer. Yep. Great switch hitter. 3,000 hits, 500 home runs. It was very big in the World Series in 1983 against the Phils that the Orioles won. Oh, here we're at the bottom of the seventh inning now. It's a 3 0 Orioles lead. Phils have not gotten much at all against Brad Ferguson. The starting pitcher for the O's. Yeah, and they don't have anybody up in the bullpen, Tom. Although they just took the uh, the tarps off the mounds out there. He's only thrown 73 pitches now, and it's one and one. Well, he's worked ahead of the hitters. His defense has been tremendous behind him, and he's made pitches all night. 
and the Phillies are in a team funk. Shane slices one the opposite way. On the run is Luke Scott. He can't get it over his head. A one hopper to the wall. And Shane has extended his hitting streak to nine straight games. Well, that time they found a guy who's not a good defensive player. Scott, as uh, Tom mentioned earlier, is their DH. And they wanted bat in the lineup tonight, so they got him in the outfield, and uh, he didn't get a real good jump on that. Here's a look at it. Shane drives it pretty well. It's a high sinker. And Scott ran kind of a strange route and then wasn't able to get there. It's almost as if he put his glove up and slowed down. He struggled with it. I think from the minute it left the bat, there was a struggle out there. Chase Utley now the hitter. Chase 0 for 2 tonight. 1 for his last 14. His average has dipped under 300 with his 0 for 2 this evening. 15 men left on base for the Orioles tonight. They have left the Phillies with a chance to get back into this game, not only get back into it, but win it. And they can get something going. Sounds like that Blue Jays game from mm -hmm. a few nights ago. Well, they left a lot of men on base in that series. Blue Jays left 16 runners on base in the first game of the series, wound up winning it. One down the left field line. If it's fair, it's going to be a run. It's a fair ball. It's rolling to the wall. Back to back doubles for the Phillies, and they're on the board for the first time in 14 innings. Hometown action, baby. And the Phillies are with it, too. It's three to one. Well, they're doing a good job in this inning. Well, you know, Scott's struggling out there in left field, but they're also taking that sinker the other way. Uh, left handed hitters especially because if you don't you're just going to play pepper with Roberts or the first baseman Huff trying to pull it and they're going the other way with it and they've hit a couple balls hard now they'll get the bullpen up for the first time. Danny Baez the right hander the better at right hander up in Lucevic. There goes Utley inside outing or you know, kind of hard to tell from that angle maybe it was away but it was a sinker and, and he hit it the other way. Shane can walk home. With Shane going over his swing. Danny's Baez, Baez out there in the bullpen. Uh, he's a guy's kind of rejuvenated his career too, resurrected his career. He was with Charlie Manuel in Cleveland, who was really a hard thrower at one time. Well, he's loosening up quickly. Matt Stairs 0 for 2 tonight. And Matt lines one to right field to base it. Utley and froze between second and third, so he'll hold up at third. Three straight hits now for the Phillies. And they've got runners on first and third with nobody out here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Well, first time tonight the Phillies fans have really had something to cheer about. You see Dave Trombley, their manager there, starting to get a little anxious. His bench coach is Dave Jouse. And Rick Kranitz, a pitching coach, just out there for a visit. Here's Matt Stairs. That sinker's up a little bit more now in this inning, and that was a high sinker there that he hit the right field. Chase with down by two runs, nobody out. He just has to make sure that ball bounces fair or, uh, in play, and he can't run there. And Jason works ahead, one ball and no strikes. Leon third, stares on first. And he breaks his back. Back goes out toward third. Wigginton sidesteps it. And that's the first out of the seventh inning. Well, Tuesday, July 7th at 7.05, the Cincinnati Reds are in town. And all fans 14 and under will receive a free Beach Town, compliments of Verizon. It features Jimmy Rollins, Cole Hamels, Ryan Howard, and Chase Utley. Hurry, you can order your tickets by logging on to Phillies.com. One out here at the bottom of the seventh inning, a run is in. And Greg Dobbs, one for two tonight. Well, he's going to have to get another one out of this. It's a two run game. They'd like to make it, well, they'd like to be taking the lead. They'd also at least like to get Utley home from third. Infield is a double play depth for the Orioles. Young 
Phil's fans trying to will their team to victory. Ferguson ahead, 0 and 1. A line drive, base hit, and the Phillies are going to be within one. Stairs to second, he'll hold up there. They don't want to test the arm of Marquez. It's an RBI single for Dobbs, and it's three to two. Hit something off speed there. This little guy's got something to cheer about finally. Not much was happening here tonight. That was a changeup. Hit it off the end of the bat. Good job by Greg Dobbs to make contact there, get the run in. That's going to be the last batter that Ferguson is going to face tonight. Dave Trembley, the manager for the O's, out to the mound. Baez is going to come in. Bottom of the seventh inning, 3 2. The Orioles' lead is down to one. The Phillies continue to threaten, and they'll do so against a new pitcher. Well, the Phillies have tried and tried again to try to get this crowd into it. A base hit by Greg Dobbs, and guess what? The crowd is into it. Young and old, they're feeling it right now. The Phillies down by just one. And it's a week night or weekend night, and it doesn't matter what time it is. So a whole lot to cheer about and a whole lot of time in the day. And Ferguson's day, first six innings, two hits. The seventh innings, a lot four hits and two runs. Let's see who wants to stick around, be a cheerleader. And Pedro Feliz facing veteran right hander Dennis Baez. 24th game. I've called him Danny over the years. <laughs> Dennis, he's been called Dennis. Dennis Baez. It's a strange. He's born in Cuba. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know. But as you said, there's, there is an S there, and it's not a yeah. silent S. No. Well, the only, I think the only letter silent in Spanish is the H. There's no H there. Nope. Pedro 0 for 5 against him for his career. Ferguson still walking up and down. He's got a whole lot of adrenaline flowing through that body. He was not pleased with himself as he left this ball game. Well, he got the ball up a little bit, but maybe the first play in the inning should have been caught, and that. That got it going. That, that got the Phillies some momentum when they finally got a base run. They had an instant runner in scoring position, which, as you had mentioned, that had a scoring position, a runner in scoring position all night, and with one swing of the bat, they had one. Two and two, the count to Feliz with one out here at the bottom of the seventh. Pedro the opposite way a foul ball that'll find the seats bias is a fastball up to 94 now after being out all last year with an injury uh, he used to throw really hard then he had arm problems and now he's back throwing well again right handers hitting just 197 against him lefties hitting 161 against him oh, give it up 23 hits Ferguson doing a lot of pacing line drive to center field 
Jones going back, stairs tagging. He makes the catch. And stairs will tag up and go to third. Second out of the inning. Well, this game will encore tonight at 10.30 p.m. Eastern on the Comcast Network. Oh, two outs. Wow. About 24 hours ago, we had a temperature of 104. Spent some time at a local hospital. He was dehydrated, battling a fever over the last 24 hours. And Ryan Howard, well, maybe that fever is broken. He's played in 342 consecutive games. And as it's introduced here, this will be 343. And this crowd to their feet. It's a darn good pitch hitter right there. The tying run is on third. The go-ahead run is on first. <laughs> the starting pitcher for the O's is in the dugout fidgeting right now. Yeah, he's pacing. We didn't expect to see Ryan Howard, and especially the way he looked in that shot we had earlier in the game. Looks one high and away, one ball and no strikes. We're going to keep Wigginton near the runner, stairs at third base, so he has a whole left side of the diamond, basically. Not that he hits that many balls that way, but normally the third baseman will be over playing shortstop. I don't know why they're that worried about stairs. Got a good swing there. It's one ball, one strike. Last time Ryan Howard was sick, sick was. Mother's Day 2006. This is what he did off the bench. Came off the bench and hit a pinch hit home run in Cincinnati that tied it. And then in extra innings, he won it. Hit them both off left handers that day. It's one of the air to straightaway center field. Jones on the run. Warning track. He did it again. Deep into the Phillies bullpen. A three run pinch hit home run. with a fever and he has sent this crowd into a Philadelphia fever as the Phillies now have taken the lead five to three it's a great game isn't it? try and figure it out no you can swing like that it's an even better game slow his bat up a little bit boy he lost that thing too that was way up in the air and the way that Jones runs, you thought, oh no, is he going to catch it? Uh -uh. I was watching him. It sounded good. Just as this ovation has sounded really good. Come on out, big boy. And Vegas, all they can do is continue to pace. And with that home run, Christy Fields of Nottingham, Pennsylvania. You've just won $200, courtesy of the McDonald's home run jackpot. Here's Carlos Ruiz as a pitch hitter, and he'll be retired. But the Phillies have scored five runs in the inning. Ryan Howard, his fifth career pinch hit home run. A long one into the Phillies bullpen, into Chad Hall Park's glove. And the Phillies offense is back alive once again. Thanks to their Allen first baseman. Those leaders.
local Chevy dealers. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 800-947-AUTO. By Southwest Airlines, Southwest Airlines is ready when you are. Go to southwest.com, grab your bag, it's on. And by Dodge, live strong, live bold, live now. Dodge, grab life. Oh, Ryan Howard's night consisted of a three-run pitch hit home run. That's all the Phillies need him for this evening. At least that's all they need at this point. He yeah. does not stay in the game, but man. Yeah, he's not going to stay in the game. There's Danny Baez saying sorry to Burgesson as he walks up and down the dugout. That was nice, the reaction of Burgesson there, too. It was like, you know, I'm the one that got us in that spot. Well, here's Chad Hope Park, his 17th game. Ferguson went six and a third, allowed four runs, four earned runs. He's the pitcher record right now on the losing side. Well, the Orioles have, have so many men on base. We talked about that before the inning started. That you know, you, it seemed like it was a lot worse than it was, and they given the Phillies a chance, and boy, they took advantage of it. Jones lines one to center field, coming on as Victorino, and it hangs up there for him. One away. You saw Carlos Ruiz. He enters the game after pinch hitting. In the bottom of the seventh inning. That pitch by Park just shattered the hands of Adam Jones. He's had a heck of a game tonight, that Adam Jones. He really showed off his wheels tonight. That guy can run. What an athlete. Aubrey Huff, two for three, an RBI double is third time up tonight. And the pitch is a strike. Ryan Howard is not a guy you would think about as a pinch hitter. And boy, he has done a tremendous job pinch hitting. We showed those. Two homers he hit against the Reds a few years ago. And that one he hit tonight was majestic. That was one of those real high ones. Chano Park has been good lately. He's really started to adjust to the role in the bullpen, accepted it, and he's been getting people out. He's also had a lot of movement on his pitches, too, which has helped. And in key spots, he's been getting people out. Well, they think that his stuff holds up better in short appearances than as a starter. Of course, Chano Park doesn't agree with that. He wants to start. Um, but management will win out <laughs> on that. There's Romero. The dugout guys are going to win out. And and Park has, has really pitched well. Uh, he gets Huff on a strikeout here. Second out here in the eighth inning. That's a good breaking ball right there. Well, fans, if you're looking to come to one, more than one more game the rest of the season, I'm sure you are, then you can select a Grand Slam four-pack. Customize your own uh, four-pack. You can pick one of the hot games like one of the Mets games, Friday Fireworks, or the Brad Lidge Bobblehead, and then add three more of your choosing. That's a customized four-pack. It's called a Grand Slam four-pack. You can log on to phillies.com now to make your purchase. Ty Wiggins in the hitter. Wiggins hit two for three, single twice. It's 0 2, and there's that good curve yeah. that Wheels was just talking well, about. Well, that's the thing about him. He comes in, and his velocity is up, and his breaking balls are sharp. It, a lot of times, a starter, you know, they're thinking about conserving themselves at the beginning of a game. You come in as a relief pitcher, you let it go. Let it go, yeah. Fire it. You know, throw your best stuff and do your job and get out of there. And he got him. Swing it on a slider. Wing it to down on strikes. Back to back strikeouts for Chad Hall Park. One, two, three, go the Orioles. What a difference a three run pinch hit home run makes to a crowd. We go to the ninth. Rollins leads it off.
Bring you up to speed with the AT&T Rapid Rewinds. AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. Jimmy Rollins leads it off here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Matt Albers is the new pitcher for the Orioles. Albers will pick up for Baez. who was charged with one run, but he allowed the three-run home run to Ryan Howard, the pinch hit home run that is the difference in this game. Albers has been good. This is his 21st game. One and two with a 3.86 ERA. This guy used to be in the Houston organization came over in the Miguel Tejada deal. Yeah, that's the deal in which Michael Costanzo the former Phillies top pick went to Houston as well. There's Ryan Howard. He's still he's still sweating. Hopefully that fever is broken though. What a swing. Oh, man. Nice and easy. He's feeling too bad to be up tight. Go up there. How many times does Charlie talk about there? Go up there and get a good ball to hit and let it go. Well, he went up and got a good ball to hit and let it go. And that thing went way out. He has been, uh, Charlie has, the last couple of days, despite the struggles of the team, he's been quite light with his conversation. Well, you know, Charlie, is, Charlie Manuel is one of those guys that does not want to put pressure on anybody. His staff, his players, anybody around the ball club, and even when he is upset about things, a lot of times he'll just back off and leave, let it go. You know, he knows what to do and what not to do. You don't have to tell him when it's time to do something. And uh, he believes in a lot of these guys, and he thinks they'll snap out of it. Well, he was asked today about the team's offensive struggles. He said, you know what? I know this team can hit. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about that. And that was basically all he said. And He's it, it is true. I mean, the numbers are the numbers every year he's, he's just more frustrated time with the approach that they've been taking to at bats he hates to see guys give up at bats without effort or without getting a good ball to hit or getting themselves out and that's the thing that he's been preaching over and over and he's getting a little tired of it. and that's something he wants to see them improve. Thing in the game, you know, we're talking about all the things that were going right for the Orioles. That ball to left field that Victorino hit that was kind of misplayed by Luke Scott, it just seemed to loosen everything up. Well, it makes it e even easier when Utley follows with yep. another double, just he put a little pressure on. And like, nice little easy swing, and now all of a sudden the crowd's into it at home, and uh, they start to feel a little bit. They still have to get three outs. Six straight out of the strike zone now by Albers. There's Ryan Maxson will be in charge of getting those last three outs. He'd like to do it with even more than a two run lead. Shane squared once when the first pitch came in. And he lines this one into center field of base hit right off the end of the bat. Amazing. It's, things turn around a little bit, and all of a sudden they start to go the other way. And here's what got it started. The kid was dominating. The sinker was up a little bit. Luke Scott ran kind of a bad route to that ball. And you see, then reached up the last second, couldn't get it. And as you had said, Tom, the Phillies did not have a runner in scoring position all night. And all of a sudden, with one swing, boom, they got a guy in scoring position and they threw up a crooked number. A little crack of that door. That, that door was left open a crack and then it was slammed open by Ryan Howard's three run pitch in home run. Here is Chase, whose RBI double put the first run on the board. 45th RBI of the year for Chase Utley. Big Mark Hendrickson, the left hander, is up and loosening in the bullpen for the Orioles, up above Ryan Matson. Chase tried to hold his swing, and he went to Sam Holbrook. Chase has he went up there and he's really aggressive. Thought he'd get a first ball fastball. This guy throws 90 to 95 and uh, a slider. And this guy as soon as he did it go, it looked like he went. So 
So you see from the side. Oh yeah. Another slider. How about that? He roll those pitchers out of the strike zone. He comes back with back-to-back -back sliders. Only the third strike that he's thrown to the first three hitters. Back-to-back -back sliders that he gets up there. Right. He was throwing all, throwing fastballs and struggling with them. And then there's a couple breaking balls. And they're not strikes. But Chase is up there trying to do some damage. Pull the ball and uh, get you know make something happen here. Torino was going. Rollins was not. Yeah, and the first guy better go first. <laughs> <laughs> On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Red Sox have shut out the Atlanta Braves three to nothing. Heck of a pitcher's duel between Josh Beckett and Derek Lowe. I don't know what kind of reception Lowe got up in Boston. It's a quick game too. Yeah, that would be interesting because Derek Lowe had some great years up there for the Red Sox, and he had some kind of goofy years too. Pitched a no hitter. Save 40 games for them. Starter and a reliever for them. Ooh. Oh man, it's I like thought he said ball. It's like he flipped a coin then before he called that. That took a long time, didn't Boy, it? I, I thought he said ball and then punched him out. Not that, I mean, not that we can hear perfectly from up here, but let's take a listen. Did it sound like he said ball? It did. <laughs> Sound like he said ball and called him out. That, that, that could confuse you. Well, Chase is retired. Dave Tremblay out to the mound. He's going to make a pitching change with runners on first and second and one away. Big Mark Hendrickson, the former Philadelphia 76er, is coming into the ball game for the Baltimore Orioles with one out here. in our community go to peopleallstars.com and vote for your favorite everyday all-star who will represent the Phillies with a chance to be honored at the 2009 all-star game in St. Louis on July 14th on Fox another guy that might be there is a St. Louis native not because he hit a three run pitch hit home run tonight and that's Ryan Howard but he's got a pretty good chance of joining some of his teammates in St. Louis for that all-star game especially when you consider who the manager is in yeah. the National League squad yeah Mark Hendrickson is the new pitcher for the Orioles. 17th game. One and four, 5.61 ERA. And he's on to face Matt Stairs with one out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. You can run on this guy, and they're thinking about it. And, you know, they probably talked to Hendrickson when he came in, say, hey, don't forget about. Jimmy Rollins at second base because they might go on the first pitch because he's so tall and he takes a while to get it to the plate. Here's Davey. Can't whisper anything to Jimmy, but they're probably thinking along the same lines. Yeah, the only negative is is he's a left-handed hitter and you got a clear shot at third. Oh. 
Matt Stairs is two for four lifetime against Hendrickson. He has a base hit tonight. It was all part of that five run seventh inning. You don't see Andino in that picture, but he, there he is right there at the bottom of the screen. Q shot caught by Wigginton. And no chance to double anybody up and two away. It wheels in that Red Sox Braves game. The reason it was so fast. Josh Beckett, seven strikeouts, three game, 94 pitches. Five hits, no walks, no runs. Well, think how hot he was tough coming into that game on Sunday, and the, and he was breezing along that game. Then the Phillies got to him, so he just picked up where you know before where he left off before that alley. Two outs for Jason Worth, who's 0 for three tonight. Jason riding a six-game hitting streak. They're still going to watch the runners now, and they don't want him to go, but it's not as big a deal. Now that there are two outs, and you can see Brian Roberts is a cover guy now, as opposed to the shortstop Andino. And uh, you know he's going to come in, but he's going to play a little bit deeper too. And the other thing is, if they go, they might walk Worth and then go left, left on Dobbs, so they could have a hold on. Here is Greg Dobbs waiting on deck. Doesn't it isn't that big a deal to steal here necessarily and then if you lose your right handed hitter and go left left to double whammy. And a shot eye is something during that pitching change he had kind of a bemused look on his face because I think you're right he called he said ball and then he Split second later, he, he called him out, and that's why it looked like it took so long. Yeah, Chase kind of looked at him somewhat mesmerized. Yeah, Chase kind of looked at him like, you know, I think that may have been a strike, but I heard you go ball, and now you're telling me I'm out. That'd be a good one to talk to him about later. Not, like, not now, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> not tonight. Because <laughs> he's not, you know, he's not very happy about it right now. Back toward the middle, slow roller. Roberts has it, and Victorino's retired to finish up the inning. So the Phillies will take a two run lead into the top of the ninth inning. Their closer, Ryan Matson, he's already headed to the mound to try to finish this one up. Tonight's Orioles Phil's game. Plus, we check in on the U.S. Open, and with the NBA draft less than a week away, Sixers insider D. Lineup looks back at Sixers GM Ed Stefanski's draft history. All this and more tonight on Sports Night, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Eric Brutlett comes into the ball game to play left field for the Phillies. In for Matt Stairs, and Ryan Matson is in 
It is 36th game trying to pick up his fifth save of the season. He's got to get three outs and he's got a two run lead to work with. And Matson, if he's able to close the door and seal the deal on this one, would move the Phillies back to three games up in the National League East over the New York Mets. Well, they'll face Luke Scott to start it off. It'll be Luke Scott, Greg Zahn, Robert Andino, six, seven, and eight for the Orioles. Scott today is one for four. He hit one right off the backside of Chad Durbin for an infield base hit his last time up. Brian in his last two outings has a loss and a blown save for the Phillies. His velocity has been really good though. So it's coming on and pitching in this ninth inning for Brad Lidge. Well, since Brad was put on the disabled list. Velocity's at 96-97. Over through those first two pitches, though, you can see them come sailing inside. There's a strike and it's two and one. Yeah, yeah. You, see, you know that time much more smooth in his delivery and didn't overthrow it. You know a little adrenaline rush coming in I think on those first two fastballs. Pop up left side playable. The leads. One away. Greg Zahn has two hits tonight at a ground out. He also walked back to the fourth. Chan Hope Park pitched a scoreless eighth inning. Retired the side in order, picked up a couple strikeouts. His was, ball was looking good, too. It's such a key inning because you just hit that, that explosive inning where the crowd is really back into the game. That's when you need to shut down. And he came in and did exactly that. Going to the count, not as on. Got his 0 2. He saw Ryan Howard sitting on the bench with the windbreaker on. Three run pitch hit home run is the difference tonight. Ryan, who was released from the, the hospital after suffering from a little dehydration late in the, this morning. Guy's a gamer. You know, a lot of guys could have stayed home tonight. And he, he shows up here at the ballpark, bang, hits a three run pinch hit home run and gives them the lead. And they're trying to hang on right now, <laughs> trying to drink those fluids. Yeah. Huh? Wow. Charlie was saying that every time he's tried to give Ryan a day off, Ryan, he said Ryan just doesn't want to come out of the lineup. And he sat him down a few years ago against Randy Johnson yeah. one time out there yep. in Arizona, and Ryan wasn't happy about it that day. And he said he wanted the challenge of facing Randy Johnson. Two balls, two strikes, the count is off. And the count remains two and two. Zahn is fighting some pitches off here. Another fastball, that one at 94. He has always been a pretty good player. He's been around a long time and does a good job for every place for him. More of a backup catcher than an everyday guy, but you can plug him in for a while and he, he can do the job. In the air to right field, it's deep. Worth is back, and this is going to be a one run game. That's a pretty long home run from Greg Zahn. And the Phillies' lead is now one, five to four. It's only the second home run of the season for Zahn. 
Orioles have their share of fans here tonight. And they got some guys on the bench they can bring off too. And you know that's the life of a closer. It is a really, really tough job. And Ryan Madsen trying to do it right now and struggling a little bit with it. And uh, that was a cutter. And it came right in on his hands, not on his hands. It didn't get there. And he hit away. Well, Nolan Reimold now will pinch hit for the Orioles. Will said they have some firepower off the bench. And there's the first pitch cutter for a strike. They play him the pull. Feliz over toward the line at third. Bruntlett is fairly deep in left field. Chopper toward third. Right at Pedro. Two away. That's where playing close to the line didn't hurt the Phillies at all because the ball was hit such where Pedro just to the glove side was able to make that grab. Shit. Right, it was hit hard enough to his left that he's able to get there and not towards the hole too much. Here it is, he's guarding the line because you don't want an extra base hit here. Took a little bit of a bad hop there, but Feliz guns him down. Now you got one to go. Yeah, another pitch hitter, Oscar Salazar. Salazar hitting 364 this year, and he's down in the count 0 and 1. A little spice in the crowd now. They're coming to their feet with two outs here in the Top of the ninth inning. Phillies trying to end a four game losing streak. Outside, one and one. Salazar, four for 11. He was smoking hot in Triple A when the Orioles brought him back to the big leagues. Chopper right side. Dobbs watches it go through the hole. A base hit. And the Orioles have the tying run on first with two outs and back to the top of the order. And Felix P.A. is going to come on and pinch run the former top prospect from the ball uh, from the Chicago Cubs organization it was acquired from the Cubs by the Orioles. It was basically a, one organization has given up on their top prospect and the change of scenery was in order. Yeah, they liked VA a lot with the Cubs, but it just didn't work out inside to make that change. And he can run, so he's on first. Brian Roberts, the batter. Brian Matson has given up a home run here in the top of the ninth inning. Greg's on. Now has the tying run with good speed at first for Brian Roberts, who is one for three with a couple RBIs. A toss over. Off and it's 1 0. PA has stolen 118 bases in his career in the minor leagues. Charlie throwing down his sides. Dave Tremblay has already given his signs what he wants to be done. 1 and 1 now to Roberts. Tough spot for Ryan Matson trying to close this game out. That's what the closer has to do, Tom. And he's in that role right now. It's a tough spot. Change up for strike two. One and two. That's a good change up. Sure was. And the crowd to their feet once again. Now everybody is up. Matson's got his sides. In the air to right field, it's deep. Worth is back to the warning track to the wall, and the Orioles have taken the lead. A two run home run from Brian Roberts. Oh boy. And Baltimore is on top six to five. Second home run of the inning allowed by Ryan Matson. And just when you thought things had turned, 
for the Phillies. In the positive, they flip right back around. It's a fastball, too. Fastball right. Oh, man, that thing came middle in, and he crushed it. See where Matson did not want it in that spot and missed his spot. He threw a couple of them early in the count in to the first batter. Mm. That young lady showed the emotion perfectly. Oh boy. It's a tough job when you try to close. You know, everybody talks about Lidge's problems and plug Matson in and Brian can do the job and he's done a good job at it, but the guys that go out there and do that on a consistent basis, it's really hard. Oh, and one to Marcakis who pops it up to left center field. Brutlett is over. And the inning is over. But the Orioles scored three runs in the top of the ninth inning. And now they have the lead by one. Go to the bottom of the ninth. So many emotions on both sides of the spectrum. One for Brian Roberts. The emotion is elation. For Ryan Matson, it's total disappointment right now as we go to the bottom of the night. Then Matson allows three runs in the top of the night. George Sherrill now will come on to try to close it for Baltimore with the Orioles leading it. And this is how the range of emotions have switched from one side to the other. Boy, the long ball's come out. Ryan Howard comes off the bench. Pinch hit home run. Lights a place up. Phillies with a two-run lead. Looks like they're in good shape. Ninth inning. Middle in fastball. The one place you really don't want to throw a fastball in that spot, and nobody knows it more than Ryan. And Brian Roberts, to his credit, gives him the lead. Well, the changes for the Orioles. Melvin Moore is on to play third base. Ty Wigginson moves from third to shortstop. PA stays in the game. He's in left field for the Orioles. And they join George Sherrill. PA bats ninth, of course. That's where he was. And Chris Coase will pinch hit. Here at the bottom of the ninth inning. The Phillies now need some base runners. Well, they need one. And they got to roll it along here. Goes to the 250 on the year. Couple home runs, seven RBIs. Ryan's not available anymore after his three run pitch hit home run. And it's one and one. The Orioles with six runs on 16 hits tonight. Come on, Coach! Phillies five runs on eight hits. Outside two and one. 
This is the end of the Phillies bench too. The last move. There's Ryan Howard who came off the bench at the home run. The, the last move off the bench uh, is Chris Coase. Brian Roberts put them ahead with his home. Coase pops it up straight away center field. Adam Jones puts it away for the first out. What a way here at the bottom of the ninth inning. Phillies have lost four straight. A win tonight. And their lead in the East could be back to three. If they wind up losing this one, it remains at two. Tough job. Nobody feels worse than, than Ryan Madsen right now because of uh, all the electricity that was in this place, and he needed to get the three outs. Pedro's 0 for 3 tonight. He's popped out three times. Takes a break at ball for strike one. Swing by Pedro, and it's one ball and two strikes. Jimmy hoping for a chance. So is Chase. So is she. And it's two balls and two strikes now. Eric Brutlett is the on deck batter. Charlie Manuel put Eric in as a defensive replacement, so he'll get a chance to bat here in the ninth inning. Hoping that he does so with somebody on base. There's a looper to center field, Jones. Waits for it, and there are two outs. So the Phillies down to their final out here at the bottom of the ninth inning. Throughout this homestand, a lot of these losses have been difficult to swallow for the Phillies because you know, there have been extra inning losses. Yeah, there have been advantages or opportunities that they've taken advantage of to get back into the game and take the lead. They haven't been able to finish off a lot of these games. Brutlett this season hitting 160. And the count one ball and no strikes. Phillies last year, when they let it going into the ninth, didn't lose. That's because Brad was 41 for 41 and save opportunities. It's a strike. One and one. And it's one ball and two strikes now to Brutley. They're continuing to guard the line at third to stay away from a double. And uh, leave a big hole on the left side for Brown. And there you see Mora, the new third baseman, over towards the line. We're doing the same on the first base side. Brutlett down to his final strike. All Ryan Howard can do is sit and watch. The Phillies have lost five games this year when they've led going into the ninth inning. All Ryan can do is sit and watch and just hope. Swing and a miss, and the Phillies have lost five consecutive games. They had a one run lead, or two run lead, excuse me, going into the top of the ninth inning, and the Orioles scored three runs.